The Cleveland Cavaliers have already made two moves, one in re-signing Ricky Rubio to a three-year, $18.4 million deal, as well as bringing Robin Lopez on board for one year. And it seems like the rest of the NBA has been busy as well, with deals being handed out left and right. There's already been a lot of movement and things aren't even close to being finished. The Cavs still have a need that must be addressed in some form or fashion at the small forward position, so today we're going to focus on addressing the team's need for shot creation out on the wing. Enter unrestricted free agent TJ Warren, who most recently suited up for the Indiana Pacers, but hasn't played more than four games in the last two seasons combined. And the reason why Warren has become such an appealing option is because he could possibly be brought in using a portion of the mid-level exception. In Warren's last full season with Indiana, the 2019-2020 season, Warren had a career year in various areas totaling highs in scoring with 19.8 points per game, a field goal percentage standing at 53.6%, a free throw percentage at 81.9% just to name a few. He took things to the next level while playing inside the infamous NBA bubble in which he averaged 26.6 points, 6.3 rebounds, and 2.4 assists over 10 games during that stretch. He is absolutely capable of creating offense for himself at the high level and that is an element that is missing from the Cavs current group of wings that includes Lamar Stevens, Dean Wade, Isaac Okoro, Jetty Osmond, Dylan Willer, and a few others to boot. Warren is able to get his spots and while he isn't the most athletic wing on the market he certainly gets the job done in other ways. He doesn't shoot the three ball with massive volume, but was highly effective when taking them as he knocked down 40.3% of his attempts from range in his last full season and did so in a bevy of ways, whether that be as a spot up option, as a trailer, coming off of screens, or flat out pulling up on his defenders much like he did during his 53 point explosion in the bubble against the Philadelphia 76ers in which he went 9-12 from three point range. Because of this, Warren would be a tremendous addition to a team that could use more spacing from its wings. He's also quite the mid-range threat as he can back you down and knock down turnaround jumpers over you. He's also an underrated cutter, usually opting to go with backdoor cuts and isn't afraid to initiate contact at the rim whether that be off of a transition opportunity or driving to the basket. He ranked above the 90th percentile throughout his career for wings attempting the most middies according to Cleaning the Glass. The 6'8 forward won't wow you with his assist numbers, but he moves the ball well enough and can find the open man and won't stagnate the offense. Now on the defensive side of things, Warren is no slouch. He has good instincts in terms of playing the passing lanes, which resulted in 1.2 steals per game during his last full season, and his length allows him to muck up passing lanes for opposing players. He has shown increased awareness on this end and some switchiness too. He isn't as much of a liability as he was in years prior, and he appears to give more effort defensively, which is a nice thing to see in regards to progression. He would likely fit really well whether he's coming off the bench or starting in the front court alongside Evan Mobley and Jared Allen. And with all that said, with that recent news that Ricky Rubio resigned for $18.4 million, that kind of complicates things in a bit in terms of bringing him on board. Now I've heard that the team could make the deal a sign and trade and include Dylan Windler and Jetty Osmond to free up enough space to get to the full mid-level exception. That could open up enough to bring him aboard, but the risk would only be worth taking if they knew he would be able to sign. Time will tell where Warren lands.